Welcome to this inaugural edition of Q&A. It's me, Lynn Testa, and today, well, given that Disney Unpacked is something that Jim Hill and Jim Scholl and I have been working on for a couple of years now, we thought it might be time to give folks some background on how this project, which is our first ever video series, actually got started. So who wants to go first on this? Jim Hill? I, uh, Lynn, I did, uh, if we're talking about the origins of, of Disney Unpacked, I, I don't honestly remember the early days of this project, but then again, I, I have trouble recalling what I had for lunch. Well, maybe Jim has fallen victim to the ancient Jedi mind trick. This is not the video series you're looking for. Move along, move along quickly. Uh, Jim, Jim Scholl, we want people to subscribe to this. What? What? Oh, now he tells me. Oh, wait, wait. So... <laughs> This is the video podcast you've been looking for. This is the series you want to be part of. This is the series that you want to subscribe to. That's better. Thank you, Obi-Wan Shul. Thank you. I'm here all week. Well, if we're talking about the early day, uh, early on here, what I can actually remember is when Jim Shul first came on my radar. I've been covering the Walt Disney Company for over 40 years now. And starting in, well, this would have been the mid-90s or thereabouts. But when the PR teams for the Disney parks, whenever they talk up a new project for the parks, when they cheer pieces of concept art, they'd be these clean, crisp, easy-to-read, neatly composed drawings. I mean, you'd look at these images and immediately think, that's a ride I want to go on. And and there, in the corner of all of these pieces of concept art, Len, would be this smallest signature which read J. Shul. And uh, now, forgive me for being an egotist. Uh, that ship has sailed, Jim. Okay. That, 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 again, J. Shul almost sounds like Jim Hill. And, and and so that, to be honest, is how Jim Shul originally came on my radar, because his name sort of sounded like mine. And and, and not to overlook the fact that great pieces of concept art uh, with his name on it for Crush's Coaster, Rock and Roller Coaster, Silly Symphony Swings, up Mater's Junkyard Jamboree. And and, and so, again, it, it, it's kind of like that running gag from Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Who are these guys? And And only in this case, it's like, who is this Imagineer behind all of this amazing concept art that whose name sounds like mine? <laughs> it's like they, they got one guy doing all of this. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who is this guy? Why do they have him trapped in a room? There we go. <laughs> all right. Uh, Mr. Schull, I think it's uh, as good a time as any for you to talk about your own history with the Disney company. Well, gee, how much time do we have? You see, I was a Disney fan long before I ever became an Imagineer. I wanted to be Imagineer, but... I fell in love with the parks. Um, As an example, here's a couple of photos that I can show you uh, to back up my my childhood memories. Here's a photo of a young Jim Shull in Adventureland in Anaheim. Likewise, here I'm in my childhood bedroom. Note on the uh, knotty pine walls, a carefully arranged Disneyland fun map. And uh, and what is that, a 12-inch television screen there? You had all of the luxuries. Well, back in the day. Hey, it was black and white, though. It got both black and gray. Oh, and the third one is, this is a photo of me in my father's backyard. He had a a construction project he was working on. And to that end, he ordered up a truckload of sand and bricks and wood, which I commandeered. So as a young child, I started putting my toes in the construction waters in a real show-and-tell environment. Given my love, therefore, for both Disney parks and theme park construction, well, it was probably inevitable that I was going to be winding up in a Disney Imagineering. Actually, I sat down with a friend one day um, at a lunch, and he said, yeah, they're, they're looking to bring new people into the company. Would you be interested? And I said, yes. And so I, a couple of weeks later, I found myself sitting there in my cubicle, new cubicle, off of the uh, Rodier Drive, which is now gone to make room for the Circle 7 uh, television studios. And I started working on Imagineering projects uh, back in the late 1980s. This was the time when a lot of new projects were on the horizons, like uh, Wonders of Life and the Disney MGM Studios. As an Imagineer, for over 30 years, I got to travel the world and I work with the best of the best and worked on some really amazing projects both domestically in Florida and in Anaheim, but also in Hong Kong, Shanghai, 
Tokyo, and of course, Paris. And then you retired from Imagineering in December of 2020, right? You know, Len, you're right. I retired from WDI, but that doesn't mean I retired from Disney. At some point after December 2020, you and I met for the very first time in person in a hotel lobby there in Orlando. Uh, there may have been some food and a little bit of beverage involved. Uh, and what follows next? Well, it's going to be kind of a rock well, and well, let me let me let me tell this part of the story, uh, Jim Schull. So Jim Schull fires up his laptop and to say that at some point very early on, in this presentation that Jim Schull had done, which included like concept art from his best projects at Disney. At some point, very early in this, I turned to Jim Schull and I say, I will buy you as many drinks as necessary for you to get through this presentation. I don't care how long it takes, but we're going through this, right? And it's just, it's page after page after page of like concept art for projects I've never heard of or details for things that I'd never thought about before. And at some point, Jim Schull, I turned to you and I was like, okay, this is all great. Like, we, we definitely should do something together. But. Why is there always a but? Every single project I ever worked on, including Disney Unpacked, there's always been a but. Well, again, remember the joke from Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Everyone I know has a big but. But <laughs> what I said to Jim Schull, especially you know, after seeing all of the photos, was, you know, this isn't a podcast you've got art that people need to see. This is really a video series, not a podcast. And, and, uh, and again, remember, you know, we're talking about the, the, not just the concept art, but the photos. And, and in, in Jim's case, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, when we started out, we thought we were only dealing with, what, 40,000, 50,000 photos? You know, Jim, we were both young. We were naive. You know, we didn't know what we were doing. And I hadn't cleaned out my closets at home for decades. Uh, and so, you know, when we started this project, we really started thinking about it seriously. I finally had the reason to uh, you know, organize all my home office. And I came across oh, old computers with hard drives and cameras uh, with film rolls and slides and boxes of uh, scrapbooks, and they were all these materials that I just collected, uh, but never really used or sorted. Um, and they comprised, oh, the last count, we're over 100,000 images. Yeah, speaking of uh, putting shows together, season one of Disney Unpacked is already filmed. Uh, we've done 10 shows. Aaron Adams, who handles the editing on the Disney Dish podcast, has been working with all of the video and photo elements that we've sent to him. And uh, he, he's just getting started on episode 10 and as we speak. Well, and I guess we should mention that because none of us have ever done a show quite like Disney Impact before, we experienced something of, what's the kind word, a learning curve? Is that what it's called? <laughs> That's a polite way of saying that uh, you and Jim Hill completely overwrote the first few scripts, right? Oh, come on. We, we had a lot of great stories. We had a lot of great images. So we got a teensy bit ambitious. Yeah, I, I would call us we were complete, if not concise. How long was the, uh, the longest script that you guys wrote for season one? Because I remember it, it took a while to get through it. Oh, yeah. There, you know, there, there are countries who have constitutions shorter than the scripts that we wrote. But that the one you're talking about, oh, that was over 12,000 words. Yeah, so like almost 50 pages of script. I remember the uh, the recording sessions went on for days, so much so that we actually had to have discussions about continuity, like what we were wearing and what our hair looked like. And then then Aaron goes to town on it with like, I mean, he calls me up one day. He's basically got on like a butcher apron with cleavers and he's like, let me know when to stop cutting. <laughs> All right. Uh, to give us credit, we did learn as we went that less is more. And and in the latter shows in season one, we, we got the word count down to what, Mr. Schull? 6,000? Uh, you know, uh, plus we also learned that that we, to, to really lean into uh, Jim Schull's photo library, let the pictures do the talking. Well, one of our mantras, you know, finally became really let this be a video show. And rather than talk about something, let's show it. Let's show what we're talking about. And so we really let the pictures do the talking in Disney Unpacked. I'm going to uh, translate that as it took you guys uh, two years to finally take my advice. But whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, uh, and you're already working on season two, right? 
Oh, yeah. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah, Jim and I are working hard on that. We transitioned from finishing up season one to working immediately on season two. And to that end, we've got currently right now 14 shows in active work, uh, yep. shows that'll have new images, videos, all new artwork, and again, all new animation. That's right. You're, uh, you're, you're, you're creating uh, custom animation for yes. each of these episodes, which I love. Some of them are so funny. I, the, uh, every, every time we see Michael Eisner on the screen makes me laugh, honest to God. <laughs> like, I'm looking at this like, okay, that's funny. <laughs> that's kind of great. <laughs> he is a, a wonderful supporting character for this show. And <laughs> he's going to have to get an IMDb credit for this one. There we go. There we go. And as for actual scripts for season two, I, uh, Mr. Schull and I have begun the physical writing on, well, we, we have a show about Tom Sawyer's Island, as well as one about whales versus squids. Ooh, whales versus squids, the Godzilla movie that never got made. And while we're talking about Disney Unpacked, I should mention right now that the very video you're looking at will be part of a suite of shows that supports this new video series. Each month, we'll be answering subscribers' questions, your questions, about the episode that was just released. Oh, and don't forget about Carry On, which is a, a podcast that we'll be doing in addition to the Disney Unpacked video series. That's where we'll share the stories that wound up being cut out of a, that, that month's episode by Aaron. Not that I'm bitter. All right, folks. So hopefully that gives you a better understanding of how Disney Unpacked came together. Jim Scholl, Jim Hill, and I, not to mention Aaron Adams, plus Eric and Lauren Hersey, who have been handling the social media side of this new effort, have been working hard for months, nay, years now to get this thing out the door. And we're really excited to see what you folks think of our first ever video series when Disney Unpacked formally launches in just a few weeks. Until then, don't miss out on any of the fun. Head on over to Disney Unpacked on YouTube and subscribe. We'll be posting additional preview videos in the weeks ahead. In the meantime, be sure and check out the Disney Dish podcast, which features me, Jim Hill, and now Mr. Scholl with the regularity that would frighten Wilford Brimley. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Anyway, folks, thanks for checking out this video, and we'll see you all again real soon. Mm -hmm.